would like to learn new ways of making money? I just show hand. How many of you like to learn those and be able to use it right away today? Good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm very, very glad that actually you guys show up because I feel uh, today's session is very, very unique. Uh, I have the privilege to get to know Mary McWilliams for a long time, really changed my life. And I feel how the company was being founded. And uh, before that, I just give a little bit background on myself, how I transitioned from uh, the corporate world to actually doing what I'm doing right now. Okay. Um, I'm a CPA by training. Uh, been in the corporate world for over 23 years. Back in 2002, I was very fortunate that I get to know Marin, and uh, learning a method allows me to be able to uh, get out from my six-figure income job and actually turn into actually uh, start my own business. So this book also says a lot of people learn to climb the corporate ladder. At the end of the corporate life, they found that they climbed the wrong ladder. This book says, why don't you buy your own ladder to climb? Any idea what's the name of the book I'm talking about? Yeah, reach that put that. What's the name of your author? Yeah, Robert Kiyosaki. Next page. So when they look at Robert Kiyosaki, they seem to look at me, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I always think I look more like him. <laughs> so in Robert Kiyosaki's series of book, he talk about investment. He said in the investment world, there are three group of investors. He said the first group is this. Market goes up, they lose money. Market goes down, they lose money. Don't be like that. We call this that, call this group, people call the losing investor. I should call them the gamblers, because why? They never learn anything and still want to be there. First group. Second group is, market goes up, they make money. Market goes down, they lose money. We call this group the average investor. Average investor, they only know how to make money one way. Sharing with us her experiences in the world of stock trading. Our guest tonight is Miriam McWilliams, a self made millionaire and chief trainer with the financial education mentoring organization Wealth Mentors. We have the honor of presenting to you Miriam McWilliams. How about that? She is chief investment trainer and chief she is no ordinary woman, a millionaire trader, right? That's right, and she now goes around teaching people, both men and women, how to invest. Thanks, Miriam, for joining us on the morning show today. His options so easy and so easy to understand and simplify even for a lay person like me who has no background in any accounts. And I'm confident with your guidance and with your help, I should be able to do well. I will do well. It's a whole package. It teaches you not only the profitability, but it also teaches you the probable loss, how to manage that and how to grow your wealth and how to keep it up. I've been training since um, 2008. What I like about Miriam's uh, methods are that they're very simple to follow. Um, the rules are very precise and concise. If you follow the rules, you are guaranteed success. You have to follow the rules, though. Success rate, uh, I think, is about uh, at least 50% a year on average for the past eight years that I've been doing it.
I had a dream, probably over 20 years now, a dream that one day I would be financially free, a dream that I would be able to travel around the world, see this beautiful planet, visit some exotic places. Like I mentioned, myself and my husband, we're scuba divers, we do underwater photography. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to live a very healthy, a very wealthy, and prosperous life with passion. That was my dream. However, however, <laughs> I was so unprepared for the challenges that I incurred trying to make this dream a reality. I had no idea that I would make the type of investment that I did in my education, and then at the end of the day, lose money. And I was to trading the U.S. stock market. There are certain things that you need to understand about the U.S. stock market. Because when you understand how the stock market works, you will find that you will be in this certain position of advantage. When you do not understand how the stock market works, you will be and find yourself in a position in which you are at a disadvantage. Being at a disadvantage can end up in loss of capital. Am I right? Yes. yes. So that is why I have just a few little concepts I'm going to share with you today so that you can see what I mean when I say understand how the stock market works. So. Anybody recognize this big picture? <laughs> what is it? It's a ball. It's a really big one, too. So if you visit New York City, the Wall Street area, you'll see it. People photograph with it all the time. Yes. Now, if I say I am bearish shares of IBM, I don't mean this one. <laughs> something cute, something cuddly. I mean something that has a little bit more Ferocious, somebody that can somebody that can take a bite of the portfolio. So if I say I am bearish shares of IBM, in which direction? To the downside. Exactly. You now have learned something pretty amazing. And that is share prices just do not go up. Share prices can also do what? Go down in price. So now this is what the person who is just starting their trading career, this is what is the challenge with them. They have to pick the perfect stock. They have to buy it at the perfect time. And it can only go up for them to make money. Am I right? Buy the perfect stock at the perfect time, and it can only go up. You get it, first make 1000 then you can take down 10000 and make 20000 Kind of the way that it works. Now, um, there is a way, like I said, to be able to do this, and I'll share that with you in a moment. Would that be OK? Yes. yes. Another concept is the concept of, has anybody ever heard the phrase, do not put all of the eggs in one basket? Anybody ever heard that expression? Yes. Yeah, and I guess if you have a large portfolio, it's easy to understand that you don't want to take you know, half a million dollars and buy shares of Apple with half a million dollars. Yeah, if Apple has a bad day, yours will be a whole lot worse, right? <laughs> but <laughs> that person can simply divide the monies and maybe buy shares of Apple computers. Of course, I'm not making any recommendations today, right? Uh, they can buy shares of Apple computers. They can buy shares of Citigroup. You see, they're taking their big monies, and they will diversify that money or buy shares. I'm going to use the smallest amount of capital. And then when, that, when I decide to sell the property, or I decide to sell the stock, or sell my business, the money that I get back will be a lot. See, that's the power of leverage. A small investment capital can turn into a lot of money. Now, in the US, we have such a tool that enables us to do that. And that tool is called options. What is it called? Options. Options, options are an amazing tool. They really are. And what makes them so special is that you can, instead of paying $50 for a stock, you may now be able to participate in shares of those stocks by buying an option that maybe only costs you three or four dollars. You see, anybody want to pay $50? See, anybody want to pay three or four dollars? It's a huge difference. And then what about 
stop Twitter, you see? And, and here you see how in February the stock went up and as the stock goes up, you might have been able to make money. You see, you might have been able to make money here, not sure. And then all of a sudden, the next round, the stock drops like a rock. It's not that the report was good and the stock went up and the report was bad and the stock went down. It doesn't work that way. The, the stock could have made a lot of money and the stock can still drop. The key is that do not hold that option either the call or the put option through earnings because it will be a very bad day in your portfolio, you see? So I think that what I was trying to do today is kind of give you a little bit of a, a background information about how all it takes is a little bit of time, energy, and effort to be able to understand certain key concepts. And once you understand those certain key concepts, myself is, uh is it for me to put my investment in option trading? Okay, how risky is it? Basically, investing, the word itself, investing, always carries risk. Whether you're investing in properties, or you're investing in a business, or you're investing in stocks, or you're investing in options. That's why we always recommend that individuals take out the time to understand how the stock market works. You've got to take the time to gain the knowledge that we talked about, understand all the little details about option trading, and then practice money management <coughs> techniques. The cool thing about it is that, as I have just mentioned today and lady, you don't have to start trading with your life capital. If you find that, well, I think I would like to trade over a few days, and then you open your virtual account, and you're like, you know what, this isn't for me. Then maybe you can find that trading over a few weeks is more suitable to you, you see? So that's why companies get you to pay the dividend, you will get that, but with the option, you won't. But you get leverage with the option, which you don't with the stock, you see? And again, you saw that, with GLD gold at $114, buying the call and the put together cost me three dollars, and now I was able to protect myself. Whether if the gold went up, I would make money. If the call a gold went down, this book also says a lot of people learn to climb the corporate ladder. At the end of the corporate life, they found that they climbed the wrong ladder. This book says, "Why don't you buy your own ladder to climb?" Any idea what's the name of the book I'm talking about? Yeah, we should put that. What's the name of your author? Yeah, Robert Kiyosaki. Next question. So when they look at Robert Kiyosaki, they seem to look at me, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I always think I look more like him. <laughs> so in Robert Kiyosaki's series of book, he talked about investment. He said in the investment world, there are three group of investors. He said the first group is this. Market goes up, they lose money. Market goes down, they lose money. Don't be like that. He called his dad. Call this group people call the losing investor. I should call them the gamblers because why? They never learn anything and still want to be there. First group. Second group is market goes up, they make money, market goes down, they lose money. You call this group the average investor. Average investor. Just make a thousand, then you can take down ten thousand and make twenty thousand. Kind of the way that it works. Now, um, there is a way, like I said, to be able to do this, and I'll share that with you in a moment. Would that be okay? Yes. yes. Another concept is the concept of, has anybody ever heard the phrase, do not put all of the eggs in one basket? Anybody ever heard that expression? Yes. Yeah, and I guess if you have a large portfolio, it's easy to understand that you don't want to take you know, half a million dollars and buy shares of Apple with half a million dollars. Yeah, if Apple has a bad day, yours will be a whole lot worse, right? <laughs> but <laughs> that person can simply divide the monies and maybe buy shares of Apple computers. Of course, I'm not making any recommendations today, right? Uh, they can buy shares of Apple computers, they can buy shares of Citigroup. You see, they're taking their big monies and they will diversify that 